Hey everybody, welcome. In this video, we've got some SDK experts who are going to be talking about uh, some cool things you do with SDK, giving some hints and whatnot. So on the far side of there, you got we have Bob, we got Paul. Uh, Bob is the director of the ComSpoc. <laughs> Next to him, we got Paul. Paul uh, works on Coding Astrogator, one of our space products. And really? We have, Years ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you work on now, Paul? Ancient. Uh, ODTK, plugins. All right. Of, there you go. SSA software. So uh, everything. You've, you've, you have worked on Astrogator. I've, I have. Oh, yeah. And now in the past. you are qualified to talk about it, which Apparently. we're going to do here today. And Bob, you are too sometimes. That's back, yeah. when, back when I was PM, you were coding. That's, yeah, Matt. You, Matt. To, uh, definitely qualified to be a part of this video. And we also have Noah, who's going to be doing a lot of the talking. He's qualified, too. He's qualified. <laughs> just barely. Bob said so, and <laughs> Paul said so, so he's qualified. We're just the strap hangers. So he is going to be going through this uh, demo and, and running most of it. So topic du jour. Paul, what do we got? Geo satellites. Geo satellites in SDK. So we're going to show you a few things that will help uh, using geo satellites. A little bit easier. So first, I think we're going to start at the beginning on how to get some geosatellites into it. So if you are an expert user, you can skip ahead about two or three minutes. And uh, Noah, what do we got? Right. So there's a couple ways you can insert a geosynchronous satellite. So if I come to the Insert SDK Objects menu and select my satellite, the first one we're going to go through is the Orbit Wizard. So if you insert using this method, there's actually a type for geosynchronous satellites. In this case, I'll rename my satellite. Bob, real quick, geosat geosynchronous versus geostationary. The one sentence difference. Geostationary is generally on the equator with little or no inclination. Uh, geosynchronous is not. It has a 24-hour period, essentially, but it's not necessarily no inclination. Right. right. Yeah, that's a good point. So the two sliders that we have available to adjust our orbit is a sub-satellite point. So it'll align with that longitude when you drag the slider. And then, as Bob mentioned, we can change the inclination. So typically, you can have a zero degree or a very slight inclination. Um, but with this slider, we can go all the way up to 180. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave that back at zero. There are some geosynchronous satellites that have inclinations like 55-ish degrees. Some of the NAV constellation satellites for the Chinese, the Baidao satellites. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and... And Bob was wondering what you were going to talk about when we started this video. You said, <laughs> what do I have to add? Already, you're adding, adding good stuff. Thank you. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and add this satellite from the Orbit Wizard. You'll zoom out and see that we have it there. So I'm going to go ahead and show the other method. Before you do that, can you animate through just so if anybody is new and not sure how geostationary work, geostationary satellites work is they actually move in an entire orbit, and the Earth rotates perfectly. Go ahead and push play. Sure. The inertial view, yeah, because there's nothing special about these, really? except they just happen to have the right period. Right. And yeah. Look how the stars are not turning. Perfect. Yeah, so there we go. So another method to inserting a, a geosynchronous satellite is actually from our standard object database. So from here, we can adjust the search settings to find operational geo satellites. So from our search settings on the side, I can set the minimum and maximum period. So for this, I'm going to do 23.9 hours. And then for the maximum, 24.1 hours. And I'll also change this operational status to operational so that we don't get any junk. And then if we search for that, we have our list of geosynchronous satellites. 530. Yeah. Right. So we can go ahead and insert one of those. There we go. So now what I'll go through is how to make this view better for viewing geosynchronous satellites. So the first thing we're going to do is change the orbit system from inertial to fixed. So if I disable the inertial by window, and instead put on fixed by window. On, over on the color side? Yeah. Cha change one of them to be a different color. You can say custom or some stuff like that. There, there you go. Zoom in, yeah. And then, all right, there you go. So your fixed is white and your inertial is magenta. Yeah, so now if you animate, this will be cool. Bob, here we go. what are we looking at? So, so now you're looking at the orbit in two different frames, essentially. The fixed frame is the white, so it's the orbit with respect to the ground. And the inertial frame is the magenta there, so it's 
the inertial frame. Uh, but now the other thing, it depends on what you, you know, obviously just like any other satellite, when you're playing with SDK for Viz, you may or may not want to change your lead and trail times, you know, set your own preferences. Correct. So you um, just have one orbit on that one, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot, so a lot of times do... in, in an operational sense, I, I like to look at all the trailing and none of the lead, but that, right. you know, based on what you're doing. Yeah, so if we poor, change poor that. Noah is stuck driving while he's got <laughs> Sorry, three backseat Noah. drivers with yeah. SDK, but <laughs> he probably still only have one day propagated to. So yeah, that's true. That. Okay, so we'll change the trail to all like a year. Oh, a year is a lot. Plus, you're propagating a TLE, and you're going to wander the belt. Just do like 14 days or something. That'd be fine. All right, so now we let it rip. Let it rip. Okay, so the, the magenta orbit is closed, and now you see, which you, you really can't tell from the inertial frame, the magenta, but the white is really showing you what the satellite's doing with respect to a subpoint. So now you see how the satellite's wandering, essentially, uh, with respect to a, a single point over the globe. So now you can imagine, well, if I wanted to keep it at one point, at some point, this motion is going to become a problem, and I'm going to need to station keep. Another tool that we have to help show the drift of your orbit, we can go to the satellite's 3D graphics proximity page, and we can enable this geostationary box. So we'll put the longitude at positive 176 degrees, and then the size of our box here, we're going to leave at half a degree each direction. So if we enable that and zoom out, so here's our geostationary box. Let's go ahead and get a brighter color. So if we change this to something like a bright blue, now we can really see kind of this go. drift with respect. So this is half a degree either direction, so we can see we're much smaller than that. So as we play our orbit, we can see the drift increasing. Right now, most satellites at Geo don't have a half degree box. You, you are very generous. Yeah, most, usually they're like a point one, a tenth of a degree. Right, so let's go back and change that to a much Three smaller half. box. And now we can really see our, our satellites drift through now, this. I, this, is, this is a great example. So if I'm watching this, I feel like I need a seatbelt. <laughs> yeah. So can you walk through a trick to fix the camera to the box? Sure. So what we'll need to do is insert a satellite that's stationary relative to the Earth. So again, I'm going to use the orbit wizard to insert a geosynchronous satellite. And this one will be my reference satellite. And I'll make it the same color as the box. So we'll put it at the same point as our satellite with an inclination of zero and add that. So now what we'll do is actually give the reference satellite the, the geostationary box. So here we'll put it back at 0.1 degrees. And then what we'll do is actually change our real satellite and change its orbit system to be a VVLH system of the reference satellite. So if we use that, so now when we go back and we use our reference satellite for the geostationary box, you can see that our frame will remain stationary as we animate this. So then it's a much better view. So now you're drawing it with respect to the box itself. Correct. So now your view isn't rotating with the satellite. It'll hold at this position. So in order to get this orbit and label out of the way, if we go back to our satellite's properties, we can uncheck this inherit from the scenario box on the 2D graphics attributes. We don't want to show the label, and we don't want to show the orbit. So then if we hit OK, now they're both gone. So now we're just left with the box. All right, now we're going to see it in Astrogator. Paul, what is Astrogator? Astrogator is a trajectory design tool inside STK. And uh, that's what we're looking at here on the screen now. There's the UI for it. Right, so what I've set up is we have this geos uh, geostationary satellite in our control box. 
And I've set up an astrogator sequence that will correct its drift when it hits the eastern edge of the box. And there's also another sequence to correct uh, the inclination from the north to south. So we're going to go ahead and run through this and watch it in action. So every line we see drawn is one trial run from the targeter. Yeah. Right. So you see, you see it, it's outside the box. It's because it's, it's iterating to find the right maneuver. Paul Black, can you real quickly summarize what the targeter is doing? Sure. So when you configure the targeter and astrogator, you choose various controls, uh, things like a delta V or a direction or length of a propagation, and attempt to hit certain results, like a desired longitude or inclination or eccentricity. And what's happening now is the target sequence is going through those results and controls and iterating on the values uh, to hit the desired values of the results. So over in his browser, I didn't see a targeting sequence. How come one's getting kicked off in this instance? Well, they're hidden from the main MCS view through the use of auto sequences. And auto sequences uh, is a capability where if a stopping condition is hit, and a sequence can run automatically. Uh, and Noah, if you want to, as I gesture into the <laughs> void we here. We have a screen right here that we're looking at. <laughs> We're seeing the same thing you're seeing go. behind us. So here's your auto sequence that you had. Sure. So the stopping condition is configured to stop when you reach the east or the west edge of the control box. And this is a sequence that's run when that occurs. So it's a way to set up recurring target targeting uh, based on the same um, stopping condition. Yeah. And to be clear, that stopping condition of the eastern and western boundary of the box is specific to what you did. Astrogator is, is very flexible, and it does way more than geostation keeping. You have all kinds of, of choices there as you set up stopping conditions. Yeah, if, if you don't know what Astrogator is, just click one of the links below, can, and we'll have uh, more information on it for you. So can you erase all the iterations, the graphical iterations, and then and, uh, what, hit play? And what's we'll, that icon that you clicked? So this is to clear the run graphics. So as you said before, each iteration will draw its trajectory in 3D. Clicking this will erase all of those iterations that failed. Right. And I, what, what specifically is the icon? <laughs> uh, supposedly. Oh, that's a chalkboard eraser. It's a chalkboard eraser. <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> what's right, a chalkboard? Hit, hit play. Let's, let's uh, let it rip. So now this oh, is the cool. result. So now you don't have the tries anymore. So you can see as the orbit changes colors, that's the auto sequence kicking in, stopping it from drifting to the eastern edge, and it'll push it all the way back to the western edge and then let it drift back. You also get a sense of the, the north-south excursion caused by the inclination. And so when that gets high enough that we're kind of up near the, the full vertical width of the box is when the north-south sequence kicks in right about here. And then you see it's coming down because we did a maneuver to, to go the other direction. Earth is strobing. <laughs> Earth yeah. is strobing. So you really get a, an idea of the time scale this is happening as you see each day pass. And, and this was, a, this was a, I'll say, a, sort of a quickish east-west, north-south sequence that's on the simpler side. Uh, certainly there are many, many uh, operational uh, control approaches to maintaining a geosatellite that include things like two burn eccentricity control or there's there's many this is just a, a more simple variant if you will right and then one of the plots that we've created to kind of show its trajectory over time is this polar ran ink plot so paul maybe you could talk a little more about that sure so this is showing the natural drift of the inclination vector over time which is sort of the wavy looking squiggles and the straight lines are the correction maneuvers. So these are occurring at the same time as the inclination control. And the other thing that you'll notice is that you don't need to drive the inclination to zero when you perform an inclination control maneuver, because if you do that, you're only getting half of the time between performing these maneuvers. In our case, we pushed it all the way down to 270 uh, right ascension and the same inclination as where we started. And that allows the natural drift of the orbit to go through close to zero inclination and then increase again. So you can double the time between the north-south maneuvers if you do it this way. And if you wanted to, you could mouse over that plot and you could see that the straight lines are really the delta V because there you are on what, 26 September and go to the other end of that line. 
twenty. You, you, you could, that's twenty six. So you could see that 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 is the maneuver that takes you there that quickly, and then the natural drift. Yeah, and if you're trying to maximize the time between them, you can choose right ascensions to maximize the amount of time that it takes for the satellite to naturally drift back to the top of the box, if you want to call it that, or the maximum inclination that you allow. In our case, we just shot for 270, so you can see that's why we returned to the same spot. So this scenario is available in the install if you want to play around with it, right? Not in the installation. It's actually one of oh, our. Sounds like a blog post. <laughs> it's actually one of our level three trainings. Okay. Uh, you can find it at agi.com slash training. Awesome. Click subscribe and ding the bell for <laughs> notifications on new videos. Paul really wanted to say that. So thank you, Paul. <laughs> I see it all the time. So I just wanted to join the club. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.